So I think we're coming into an environment in which there's going to be a competition of what is a good currency. Um, and, and, and there'll be um, that competition will include um, crypto. It'll include gold. It'll include, um, you know, uh, I don't know, it could be NFTs and it could be all sorts of, and it could be um, a digital, uh, you know, ECNY, in other words, a digital uh, Chinese currency. They're all going to be competing. American billionaire investor and hedge fund manager Ray Dalio is the co-chief investment officer and chairman of the world's largest hedge fund, Bridgewater Associates. He founded the firm in 1947 as an institutional investment service and has grown it into an investment management firm with over $140 billion assets under management. With his impeccable reputation and experience, Dalio is considered an authority on several issues in the finance world. In a recent interview, the billionaire talks about a myriad of topics, including cryptocurrencies and ESG investing. According to Dalio, we are entering a new era that will see multiple stores of value competing to be the world's leading cryptocurrency. Not surprisingly, Dalio does not mention the US dollar as one of the top currencies that will compete in the new era. However, he does mention cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens. The billionaire also gives the attributes of an ideal currency. He states that it should be a medium of exchange, store hold of wealth, portable and private. Critical listening is required as Dalio does not explicitly mention Bitcoin or any other top cryptocurrency, but it is clear no other example he gives has these qualities as much as crypto assets. Please listen to Dalio's interview and let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit the like button, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Everything helps with the YouTube algorithm so we can continue to bring you these videos Thanks and enjoy. As far as um, cryptocurrencies goes, I think we are um, uh, in an era that one has to look at all currencies. What is money? What is currency? What is money? So a currency is both a medium of exchange and a storehold of wealth. And a global currency is one that you can take from one place to another. So it's portable. Um, and that's why uh, gold, um, although in, in Asia also silver, um, gold and silver are uh, through a period of time uh, were the monies because it had that attribute. And there's an era um, of um, one man's um, assets or another man's liability. But uh, uh, the, some of these assets like gold, um, it's private and it's uh, not a liability. It's, uh, it's, it's that asset. And so I think we're coming into an environment in which there's going to be a competition of what is a good currency. Um, and, and, and there'll be um, that competition will include um, crypto. It'll include gold. It'll include, um, you know, uh, I don't know, it could be NFTs and it could be all sorts of, and it could be um, a digital, uh, you know, ECNY, in other words, a digital uh, Chinese currency. They're all going to be competing in terms of that, I think. And, um, and, and, and this issue of then the printing of money, I think that this is particularly true now because um, as we look at sanctions, sanctions are playing a role. Sanctions of, you know, like countries, um, not just those that have been sanctioned, but those that question whether they could be sanctioned one way or another are thinking, what is a safe storehold of wealth? And if you look at history, history is really a, a good guide. The taking of another country's money is one of the great weapons. So like in you know, World War II in Japan, um, uh, just prior to the war, you always have these conflict and you have somebody taking the money or, 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 um, Make make it difficult for access. So in um, a prior to World War II, um, the United States froze Japanese um, assets, and so different countries worry um, that that could happen to them, and that's changing the nature of where they're storing their money and how they're operating. So um, I uh, we can get into the pros and cons of crypto, um, um, and I th think I think it's almost people pay too much attention to what's fashionable at the time and. Don't don't maybe look at one against the other and realize probably they need a diversification of those types of assets. So I would favor a more diversified view of those because sometimes crypto people don't buy gold or gold people don't buy crypto and so on. Um, and there's a certain dynamic. I think privacy is is a, a big issue. It's increasingly so, which is driving uh, people to gold. And um, but also um, crypto, um, you know, it it, it it 
it's um, it, it's a, a ledger. And so privacy um, can be cracked. And so there are these kinds of issues that are enter into this competition between these alternative types of money. If you are looking for a currency or property that is a medium of exchange, store hold of wealth, and is at the same time portable and private, Bitcoin easily checks all boxes. One only needs to look at what El Salvador and MicroStrategy are doing with the crypto asset to realize how valuable it will grow within the next decade. Back to Dalio, the billionaire also talks at length about ESG investing. Please listen to his explanation here. ESG is, uh, I think, uh, uh, again, a, 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 a fabulous um, development that is uh, very popular, that will, I think, attract a great deal of money. Um, uh, however, it is in very much the early stages. And um, to actually um, go through the process of uh, defining it better and creating uh, essentially the stamps uh, of approval and going through the mechanics of that will be um, will be an evolutionary process. The actual amount of money which wants to go into ESG is enormous. The amount that has actually gone into ESG is tiny by comparison to that. So it's in that developmental process. Um, and um, I, th I think th there's been great advances to being able to look at one country, one company or another, and to be able to actually measure what, what is their um, impact at, in all the dimensions. But there, that's a developmental process. Um, so, But we, what we have is a problem basically for our society in that we don't have enough all-in cost account. Um, and so things that we're doing um, that are detrimental to the environment or in other ways we don't have adequate charges for, and this is a move in the right direction to have those adequate charges that's beneficial. Unlike other older generation billionaire investors like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, Ray Dalio seems to have a more favorable outlook on cryptocurrencies and other digital assets. What do you think about his interview? Please drop your comments below and hit the like button. Thanks for watching.